of my video series for career tips for software testers. This morning I left on the note of job applications are completely broken and I wanted to dive a bit deeper into that sentiment today. First I'll, I'll go over to my blog post which prompted this thinking. There we go. Uh, this blog post goes through the last time I was job hunting. Uh, it was about March last year. Uh, I'd just been uh, let go from a contract that I didn't want to continue and I'd gone through about a redundancy before that as well so I'd been job hunting a lot at this point. More than I'd like to know really. And I didn't apply for a single job application. I reached out to my network and this blog post is a reflection of where are those, all those leads came from the last time I was job hunting. Uh, I had some people reach out to me from my profile organically, there were some ads on uh, Twitter that I reached out to, uh, I reached out to my community and this is how I got the, the Yao Avengers role that I now have. It's just a part-time role but uh, I wanted to get more into marketing so I was really excited about this one. Um, I got the, I found out about the role at Combank through a meetup group. Uh, uh, the leader works for Combank, the, uh, Carl works for uh, CBA and he leads the Coco Heads meetup and he said their team was looking for a QA engineer. And a few other leads as well. So I want to go through the process or at least the thinking behind uh, why I say the job applications are completely broken. So we'll go through a hypothetical story here. Uh, we'll say Deepika here is our engineering manager. Uh, she runs a team of 12 software developers for a company that maybe has 50 to 100 people. And that company has said, look, we've got position or a capacity for a, for a software tester. This will be the first one you hire, or there might be one other in the team as well. So Deepika has to work with Raj, who's the hiring manager. Uh, for this position. Now Raj doesn't know anything about software testing or technology for that matter. He's a recruiter or a, a internal recruiter for the company. Raj goes to Deepika, hey what do you want in this role? And Deepika's like, well I manage a team of software engineers. I know how to work well with software engineers. Uh, I'd like a software engineer who can deal with our tech stack who also knows how to test. Uh, because that's their, their preference. If they deal with software engineers all the time, they're more likely to want software engineers. Um, there's also like this tangible value that if you get a software engineer, they can point to something and go, I helped build that. Whereas a lot of people don't understand uh, a lot of the skill and expertise involved with testing. Even in the technical space, uh, testing is not well regarded or looked up to. People understand software engineering more than they understand testing. So the engineering manager goes, oh I'd like a software engineer who also knows how to test. And so Raj gets handed this big giant dirty list of requirements for jobs including all the possible tech stack the whole company works across and you end up with these giant job applications um, and giant job ads uh, and no one fits 100% of the roles because these are unicorn testers. I don't know these people who meet these requirements for these job ads. Do you? I'd like to know them. So you get, uh, you end up getting a bunch of job ads and I'll go through a couple of sample ones um, that I just had a quick look through for test engineer in the Sydney region. So for example, ING is looking for a senior dev uh, test engineer, a software engineer and test type of role. Um, I know the team who work at ING, they are a great team. Uh, if you do consider applying for this role, good luck for you because they would be a really interesting company to work for. I'm not dissing ING, just using their samples, job ad, um, to go through this example. But I can see that this job ad already has had 57 applicants. Uh, it's a mid to senior level and I can see the size of the company. Because uh, I pay for LinkedIn Premium, you don't necessarily have to, you might not get a lot of value out of it because I'm trying to run a side business as well. I use mostly LinkedIn for marketing. Um, so it's worth me paying for all the extra marketing associated with LinkedIn. But that means when I have a look through the job ad, I can have a look at through the, the premium features based on the job ad, competitive intelligence, um, the top skills. Right now I can see I'd be lacking Selenium WebDriver for this job ad. Uh, and it bases me against all the other 57 applicants to give me a shot of, uh, give me a perception of the chances I have if I applied for this role. It also gives you a breakdown of where those applicants are usually rarely based. 
And also, I really like this insight of the how many employees uh, a company has um, got on LinkedIn over the time. Uh, so you can see if a company's recently gone through a, uh, a round of layoffs, there might be a strong drip, uh, drop. I saw one of these today in another job ad. The average tenure is quite interesting as well, because also a higher average tenure tends to indicate that the culture of the company uh, is quite good and that people tend to stick around for a bit longer. So in tech uh, and software, the average tenure is usually about two years uh, and good companies tend to have something that's a little bit longer than that. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, and you get like this big long laundry list of requirements in that job ad too. Yeah. Um, also, uh, when back to our hiring manager, Raj here, Raj puts out an ad, maybe up on Seek or LinkedIn. He gets hundreds of applicants. He doesn't have time to filter out all the ones. He really just wants to give potentially four candidates to Deepika. So Deepika can have the, the, the perception of choice. Because generally you only want to be able to have a choice of three to five. If you have any more than that, then it's really hard to make a choice that feels like the right one. So Raj has built up all of these heuristics and shortcuts to try and get that list of 200 applicants down to four so that uh, they're not wasting time doing phone interviews or setting up interviews uh, or a whole bunch of stuff. They're trying to reduce the amount of time involved with finding someone for this role as much as possible. An example of how many applicants some of these job ads can get. Um, so I did an experiment with one of my CVs uh, and I wanted to uh, hack the software scanning uh, technology. So um, in this sample CV that I have, I've got right at the top that I'm not looking for work. I'm actually just trying to hack the, the scanning system. And right at the bottom of my CV, I've got this big uh, tiny font which is white text on white background. So if you want to try and get through, I don't recommend this as a hack, but uh, it's an interesting experiment that I'm going to use for this video. Uh, if you're concerned about not having technology on your CV, but not getting through the scanning process, here is uh, a whole bunch of tech stack bingo that I could include in a CV and it's not necessarily readable. So I only used this sample CV to apply for one job just to see what the process was like. And the one job I did apply for was a, uh, I think I, it was with Flow2Cash, one of their job ads in Sydney quite recently. Um, but if you notice the industry insights on the Seek emails, uh, there, there weren't a huge amount of job applications. There was probably 18 jobs advertised in the testing and quality assurance space and 851 applications. So on average, one person, you know, is applying to hundreds of, uh, of applications. So yes, I applied for the, the flow to cash uh, job description, I think, uh, somewhere here. Because I thought with a background in finance, at least my CV might get a click through. Um, so, uh, I got the notification from Seek that, yes, I've applied, and uh, a few days later after that, I actually got a notification saying that flow to cash has actually viewed my application process. So, by the looks of it, uh, that white text on white background hack actually got through the, the filtering system. And, okay, that, that job ad is no longer being advertised. Cool. Uh, but that is my uh, sentiment on why the job application process is, is broken. If you want ways to get around that broken job application process, having a good online profile and going through the networking steps that I'll go through in the next video will be greatly helpful for you in this situation. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this video.